In this demonstration, you're going to learn how to label linear features. So in my ArcGIS Pro project, I have um, a couple of linear feature classes that we can work with. Uh, we're going to look primarily, though, at this Trails layer. And you'll see when I select the Trails layer, my Feature Layer Contextual tab becomes active. There are three tabs, Appearance, Labeling, and Data. Labeling is the one that I'm interested in here. All right, so, and of course, my label um, is basically going to be a textual label that gets placed in relation to the features based on some type of attribute uh, field uh, that's part of that trails layer. So you can see under fields, uh, the default, and it's going to automatically select a field uh, from, from the list here. Name is going to be the default in this case, which is fine, right? If we look at uh, the trails attribute table, you'll see that name is going to be the name of each trail. All right, so things like Berry Springs Park and Preserve. If we scroll through this, you see multiple examples. They're not, not all of them are going to have labels. Some of these are empty. Uh, but this will work fine for what we're doing here. So, and, and again, you can use any of the attribute fields uh, in the table. Uh, our Dash Pro will automatically select one of those fields for you, which in this case is name, which is perfectly fine for what we're trying to do here. Now from there, I want to make sure that two things have been done. You want to make sure the checkbox for label features in this class has been turned on. And by default, each layer is going to have a label class that's assigned to it. That default name is going to be class one. You can create multiple class labels, label classes. Um, but by default, you'll always have at least one label class associated with each uh, layer, which will be called class one. Second thing I'll need to do is to turn the label on. Uh, or enable labeling and so I'll click the little toggle button here to turn labeling on and you can see I've got some initial placement of my labels um, in a lot of cases this you know it, it's going to provide some defaults here and, and then from there you're going to have to make some changes so uh, in this case I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and leave Tahoma as my text uh, symbol uh, my font style but of course you can select lots of different fonts here uh, that you may want to use I'm going to lower the size of these down a little bit. Uh, the default is going to be 10 in this case, but I'll lower this down a little bit to a uh, font size of 6. Makes it look a little bit better. Now you have several different options for label placement, and this is basic label placement for a line. So we have things like basic line, European streets, which is not going to apply here. A lot of these are going to apply to streets, so streets don't necessarily apply here. Uh, although we're not dealing with water um, features, this water line might actually work pretty well in this case. Uh, trails tend to have the same type of, of, of linear structure that water does. And so what I'll do here is I'll change this to water line. And you can see this looks a little bit better, right? You can see that it kind of follows the trails uh, much like it would with water. So that looks a lot better. Now you also have some additional options from here as well. Uh, if you'll right click on the layer and select labeling properties, that will bring up uh, the label class pane. And uh, if I go to position, you'll see that we have lots of different options here. So there are three buttons. We have the, the position button, fitting strategy button, and conflict resolution button. And we're primarily going to be looking here at the position button. So you, you'll notice here we've already selected river placement, which is the same thing as that water line. There's other options here as well. Uh, we can do regular placement, street placement, contours, rivers. Rivers per works pretty well for trails. Uh, from there, you have some additional options. Uh, you can do it centered with the curve or offset from the curve. And if I change it to centered curve, you'll see it makes a slight change where it centers it more or less on top of the line. In this case, I want to leave it offset a little bit. So we'll select offset curve, which was the default. And you can define how large that offset should be. So maybe I want to up my offset from one to three. I can offset that a little bit and that adds a little bit more of an offset. So, you know, you can toy with that as far as how, how, how large or how small you want that offset to be. Uh, different, off, different options here for measuring the offset from the feature geometry. Uh, or we can have a secondary offset as well that you can define. But most of the time, you know, you can just define a primary offset here. You have some other options here. Uh, orientation is not going to apply here. We don't have a graticule to align to, so that's not going to really make sense here. Um, we can spread out our labels a little bit if we need to, but in this case, we don't necessarily need to, uh, to spread out our labels. But if you need to do this, uh, uh, default letter spacing is going to be uh, what's selected here. But you can also spread the letters up to a fixed limit or spread the letters to uh, fill the entire feature. 
Uh, so most of the time that's going to be sufficient. And again, we're working with the Maplex labeling engine here. That's the default that's provided with ArcGIS Pro. You can see that by going to um, the this more button under the map section. And you can see that use Maplex label engine is selected. That's going to be the default. Now, if you don't want to use a Maplex label engine, if you uncheck this, it'll fall back to the standard labeling engine. But in the vast majority of cases, you're going to want to leave this checked um, because it gives you lots more options in terms of how you, uh, how you position uh, those labels uh, in relation to your features. Uh, and that, again, that's under more use Maplex labeling engine. You can also be found on the map tab uh, under more as well. So you can find that in both places. Uh, now, there's other things you can do here as well. There's a fitting strategy. So what fitting strategy does, uh, there's lots of different strategies that you can invoke here. And, and these are all intended to try to get as many labels on the map as possible. Right? If there's conflict, conflict between features or conflict between labels, then a label is not going to be placed uh, in relation to the feature. So you can see some of these features are not, they're, they're, the labels are not placed. And that's because there's some sort of conflict there. There's a conflict between the label that wants to be placed there and uh, other labels that have already been placed. And so uh, the stacking button allows you to define various strategies for uh, how you would go about uh, ensuring that multiple uh, or as many feature labels are placed as possible. Now, in the case of trails, stacking doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, what stacking does is it stacks uh, the label. And you can kind of see an example of that here by clicking on the checkbox. And so you can see how it's kind of stacked, uh, these labels. Some of these labels are pretty long. So what it does is it stacks them, uh, stacks it to where you have multiple uh, layers or uh, lines of stacking. And the, the maximum number of lines is going to be three. So you know, if you had a really long label here, then what you'd get would be three lines uh, of text. So stacking makes sense in some cases, uh, not so much in others. Right? In, in, in the case of, of uh, trails, I don't think it makes as much sense as, as leaving that un, unchecked so that you can uh, ensure that the label follows that line as far as it can. Uh, and then there's other things you can do as well. Uh, there's some overrunning. You can reduce the size of the labels by reducing the font size. Uh, you can add abbreviations. So for example, instead of spelling out route or loop or trail, you might define an abbreviation for those, uh, you know, for those, uh, the, those words. And that would cut down on the amount of label that has to be placed in relation to the feature. And therefore, you get less of a cluttered map. And you also have the ability to place more labels onto uh, to their associated features. And so these are all just different strategies that you can use to ensure that you get as many uh, labels placed on the map in relation to the features as possible. Now down there at the bottom here, we also have a strategy ordering, right? So it's going to follow a certain ordering in terms of the strategy for how it does this. So it'll first use stacking, then it'll use overrun and font compression, font reduction, abbreviation. And you can change the order of these, right? You might want abbreviation to take priority over everything else. So you might move it up to the top so that abbreviation takes precedence over all those other stacking or all those other fitting strategy options. Uh, but the whole idea behind this fit, fitting strategy button is to try to make sure you can place as many labels on that map as possible. Now you also have some conflict resolution uh, things that you can do here. Uh, in certain, certain cases you may have duplicate labels and so you have the ability here to remove your duplicate labels. Uh, you can add buffers uh, to, your, uh, to your labels. Uh, you can repeat as necessary. Right? You might, if you had a really long trail, you might want to repeat that label every so often, right? And so you can do that. Um, unplaced labels, any labels that don't get placed on the map are what's known as unplaced labels. And uh, so you do have the ability to never remove. So in, in other words, what you would do here if you check this button is you ensure that even if there's overlap um, and there's conflict of some sort, that those labels still get placed on the map wind up with a pretty cluttered map in a lot of cases when you're doing that, but there may be certain situations where you really want to do that. All right, so that's it for this uh, demonstration. I appreciate you joining me.